morning, welcome to the video. So before I start this video, what I want to do is to uh, take you back in time a little bit um, to a video that I put out just before Christmas. I don't know how we're going to do this. Uh, do we go Wayne's World, Wayne's World style? Um, that could be a wonderful little garden there, but there's about five dogs, which um, you can hear them now. Uh, about five dogs that are in there so they're just constantly digging in and peeing all over it so rather than treating it nowadays I just uh, just maintain it with uh, regular cuts and what have you um, it's about the only place that the the dogs can run freely so the uh, the client prefers to just leave them in there uh, which makes perfect sense although it's a shame because it's a lovely lovely little garden Okay, so having not treated this lawn, certainly this year, um, I got a text message from the client on Sunday. So it's now Thursday the 15th of August and I got a text message on Sunday saying, Hi Dave, my friend's daughter is getting married at their property on the 14th of September. Um, Marky is going up on the 12th. Would you be able to get both lawns in ready, in reasonable condition, looking as best as they can before then? Would a feed and a little seed help before the day? Perhaps a cut on the Wednesday the 11th instead of the Friday? So, so, so it's the 15th now, I've got text on the Sunday, and I've got to get the lawn looking as good as it can um, by Wednesday the 11th. So that's basically giving me one, two, I can't do the maths, three, so five weeks. Five weeks to get the lawn looking at its best. Um, so in that time also what I've got to do is a couple of the hedges and also there's a real wild flower area which in the springtime is all daffodils and things so I've got to get that all strimmed down and looking good too. So I started um, the process on Monday I think it was or Tuesday when it was when it was dry and <clears throat> what I did was I went round and I sprayed all the weeds in the lawn because there were some massive dandelions and things. Of course, it hasn't been a problem up until now. So I sprayed all those. Also, I sprayed all the weeds on the path and everything because I knew it's going to be dry. Um, Wednesday, yesterday, which was Wednesday the 14th, was an absolute washout all day. And Friday, which is the day I normally cut, is also looking like it's going to be a washout. So I'm coming in today as it's the dry day to try and do something. So what I'm gonna do is mow the lawn, maybe just a tad shorter than what I normally do. And I'm gonna cut it in a different direction and just do some sort of different things to it, get it down nice and low. And then the bare areas on the lawn, then I'm gonna seed them because it's gonna to rain tomorrow and I think it's gonna rain Saturday. So that's naturally gonna wash it in. Cause I know the client probably won't wash it in uh, or water it in, should I say. Um, then also I'll feed the lawn so it's a little bit earlier than than maybe I'd want to but I also want to get that feed in there to help the seed as well now nearer the time maybe a week before what I can do is I could do a a little iron treatment kind of a half rate if you want to know what I mean by that go back to my iron video I'll link it in the description and um, what that will do is just give it like a, a burst of green to get it looking good nearer the time. But hopefully the lawn, you know, will be will be certainly greener, lusher, thicker by then anyway. So that hopefully won't be a problem. But really at the minute it's just a case of dealing with these bald areas. So I think that's enough of me talking. So what I'll do is I'll go down and actually show you what I'm talking about. So this is the garden in question. So. There's a load of dogs everywhere which pee all over the lawn. 
So you can see the weeds are all cur curling up now. So that's brilliant. That's exactly what I want. That means that they're dying and they're, everything's happening as it should be happening. So that's fantastic. But you can see it's quite thin in these areas here and here and here. So I think this one's quite a bad one too. So it's really a case of just scratching these areas over and trying to get some seed in there. And this lawn here, it's a bit thin, nothing really ever happened. I mean the plan was, if you remember last video I did here, I was saying about I was saying how that was going to be the focal lawn and stuff, but in reality nothing really ever happened and um, I just cut it now, which is what they want really. I don't think they're that bothered, which is fine, but um, yeah, they've given me five weeks to <laughs> make it look good. So the first thing I'm going to do is to just go around and scratch over those bald areas. I have brought the scarifier, it might not work, so it might just be a case of having to use a fan rake. Once I've scratched those areas over, I'm then going to clear them up a little bit and then take the mower over. Maybe a little bit shorter than what I normally do. This dogs which can get out. Uh, which is a little bit shorter than what I normally do. But I'll also cut it in a direction that I don't normally cut it in. Just to sort of push that grass about. Because from then on in... Um, I'm then going to be laying the stripes that I want to just stay in for the actual wedding. So quite a few things to think about and an order in which to do it all. But what I'm going to do is do this video and then next week I will then show you any improvements. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be some. Um, and then basically this is going to be like a little series leading up to the actual day uh, when I can really sort of document any improvements and and the, the growth of the seed. Hopefully there will be some. And you can join me on that journey where I try and make an absolute shitter into something quite good. So what I've done is I've took the scarifier over just to, uh, you can see it's really long here. It's been flattened throughout the year because I only go up and down. I don't do any other directions and it's just rough grass. But what you can see now is I've created a good seed bed. So what I will do is you can just see a couple of uh, mounds of stuff I've just really hit the hot spots and I'm just sweeping this up so I scarified it over then I raked it into then I raked it into piles with the um, what do you call it with like a tine rake so actually while I'm raking it I'm still scratching it in different directions to try and get as much crap out as, as, as much as I can um, and now I'm just taking the fan rake over just to sweep it up and then what I'll probably then do is then take a blower over just to give it, to get all the stuff off. Then I'll take the mower over, give it a nice low cut in. I mean, these it's going to be the same direction it always is. But on the lawn, I'm going to go this way, which is a lot more time consuming. But then all the rest of the cuts are just going to be on the same lines, really standing these ones out. Um, once I've mown the lawn, then I've got a little spiker which I'll show you in a minute. I haven't got my aerator with me today. Actually, it's been it's gone away for uh, some improvements, but there'll be videos on that later. So I've bought one of those little roller spikers. So I'm just going to run over very quickly uh, just to help the seed really get in contact with the soil. But more of that later, so I'm just going to carry on clearing up.
was mown now. Um, I went in a little diagonal like this. I just wanted to get a different cut on it today just to push the grass in different directions. So now that's done, I'm going to use this um, and just take that over the, the really bad areas just to push some holes in there just hopefully so the seed will be in more contact the more the more contact the seed is with the soil the better basically so I'm just going to push this over it's not particularly fun um, but as I say I haven't got my aerator at the moment that's off being uh, improved um, so uh, a video for that to come So you can see the kind of finish now, the little holes, not only is that going to potentially help with seed dropping down there, but also the fertiliser too, um, getting down into the holes, will also be a benefit. So now it's grass seed time. So with grass seed, one of the things that you need to do is be aware of how much grass seed you need. Now that's easy if you're just doing a particular area. Um, they'll have sowing rates on there, whether it's a, an overseeding or you know, you're seeding along from scratch. Because what I'm doing is just little bits here, there, and everywhere, um, it's a little bit more difficult to to get a price for that. Because you know this bag is 20 kilograms, and if you work out the size of the area and you know that that's five kilograms of grass seed you need, then that's easy maths to work out exactly. You know how much you know money that that grassy costs so what I've done is I've weighed out a bucket uh, with about an inch brim around the top I've weighed that out and then I can put that into how many kilograms and then I know so I know um, one bucket costs let's say 16 pounds um, and, and then the prices change depending on what seed it is you know I can buy these 20 kilogram grass seed bags Sometimes, you know, if it's a really basic seed, it's going to be about 60 quid, say. But if it's a really precise, you know, with dwarf rye grass in and things like that, then you could be looking at 160 pounds. So you can't just measure one bucket and use it for every seed. You have to mix it up depending. So what I've done, what I have done, and it's written down at home, is measured this seed for a bucket like this. And then what I can do is I can go out and if, it, if I use the whole bucket, then I know that's X amount. If I use half a bucket, then I know what how much that costs, and that's how I can do all these kind of like spot seeding areas and work my price out for that. Of course, there's also the time it takes me to do it. So firstly, I'm listening to a podcast, that's why I've got my hearing defenders on. It's not because the, uh, the noise of dropping seed is damaging my ears. Um, secondly, you will see people who use uh, fertilizer spreaders or drop spreaders to spread seed. That is an option, but I've got a flower bed here, so I don't want to throw the seed in there. What you'll also notice is when I was doing it, I, when I did the edge, I was getting really close to the ground so there's no chance that any wind can blow it into the flower bed so what I will do is once it's done is I'll just sort of push this around a little bit and then I'm going to dress this bit out 
Uh, I haven't got any soil with me today and I haven't got time to go and get it. So I'll probably do that tomorrow morning. But at least the seeds in for when it starts raining. And all I'm doing is just scattering it. I've kind of got a rough idea of how thick I want it. So as I get close to the edge, I'm just going to very gently drop it in from low down because I don't want it to be going into the flower bed as I say. Now the lawn is seeded, so remember we've scratched out all the dead stuff with the scarifier and the rake, cleared it all up, we've mowed it and now we've seeded it. So the last thing to do at this moment is to fertilise it and what I'm using is an autumn fertiliser, so that's low in nitrogen, don't really want the grass being really long, I want to be able to cut it and get some decent stripes in, but I don't want to have to be, you know, spending time just mowing it down and getting it under control. Equally, an autumn fertiliser that's going to have higher phosphate and higher potassium. The potassium's going to, you know, just look after the health of the plant and you can see that you know it's not been fed it's not been looked after so hopefully that's just going to help improve things but equally the high, slightly higher phosphate is then going to work with the roots and the seed and help that develop and that's what we want really whenever you see a fertilizer for turfing or seeding jobs it's always high in the phosphate so by going with an autumn one we've got the we've got the health catered for and we've also got that seed and root development catered for too so that is why we've, I've gone for that. But one other thing I'd say is... Now you've seen me seeding a lawn while wearing ear defenders. Um, and I'm raking the lawn with ear defenders on. And that's fine because, as I say, I was listening to a podcast. I've now taken the ear defenders off. Because when I'm feeding, I want to be able to listen. And when you're listening, what I'm listening for is if I'm aiming for the, the fertilizer to shoot out to like hit the fence, and then I know that when I come back in, I'm going to be three meters from the fence, say, I can listen, I can hear it, and I'll hear the odd bits touching the fence. Then I know that I'm on um, I'm bang on line with where I need to be to make sure that I've got that even distribution. So I never feed while listening to podcasts. So, little tip there. So that's everything now fed. There's just one thing I have to do before I move on to this lawn over here. And this one, all I'm gonna do here is just cut this and then, uh, and then feed it. Um, from what I understand is the tent's actually gonna, the marquee, should I say, is gonna be on the tennis court. So this is, they're gonna come down the path that I've been using over there through that gate. And then this is gonna be kind of like a mingling sort of drinks reception area. As I say, all the weeds you can see, I sprayed them two days ago, so they're all dying off as well. So the last thing I have to do here today is now you can see the path. There's bits of seed on there. There's bits of fertilizer on there. The fertilizer will, it has, I think it's got a touch of iron in it, not much, but uh, even if it's, uh, even if it hasn't, it's just a good practice to spray all this off. So. I'm just carefully going to spray this back onto the, uh, or blow it, should I say, blow it back onto the lawn. And um, that should just clear it up nice.